Prepare for the risks of inflation, recession and stagflation in the U.S. economy. The macroeconomic outlook continues to dominate the executive agenda. Last year, as demand exceeded and supply chains jumped, many firms discovered pricing power they had never experienced before. But the Fed's battle against emerging inflation has increased the risk of recession. Today, macroeconomic fears are heading out of inflation and into another downturn. While the idea that a recession will extinguish the fire of inflation is persuasive, it is not guaranteed. As we discussed my channel in March, monetary policymakers pose the biggest risk to a U.S. recession. They run the risk of pulling down growth in the fight against inflation. If you increase the rates too fast or too much, they create a recession. Soft landing is difficult. Since March, this delicate balance has become even more unstable. Inflation is likely to peak as the economy slows, albeit solid. Against such easing pressures, the Federal Reserve's rate path has become more aggressive in pricing the markets. In mid-March, the expectation was that the Fed would raise interest rates to around 2% by February 2023, now the expectation is near to 3%. Even if the Fed changes its plans, these expectations have pushed up the long-term interest rates. Equity markets, especially the tech sector, have seen steep declines as a result, putting further pressure on the economy. The policy mistake has already been made and a recession is on the way. While we continue to view this as an unlikely scenario in 2022, the probability of a soft landing in 2023 is increasing. To understand why, we need to look at the path of inflation and the impact of high rates on the economy. Inflation probably at its peak. COVID inflation has been an unusual combination of enormous stimulus and extremely high demand driven by simultaneous supply bottlenecks in the product, commodity, and labor markets. It was more permanent than expected because new shocks kept coming. Initially, it was a harmless bounce inflation from low prices at the start of the pandemic. Then came the supply bottlenecks. Then last year's energy surge, a tremendous fight for labor, unexpected war in Ukraine, and the economic lockdown in China this spring. Inflation will continue to be difficult to predict. Those who warned early against inflation did not do so because they anticipated this series of shocks. While it may not be over, the period of maximum stress is probably over. Demand is cooling. Stocks are being rebuilt in a healthy way. Workers are returning to the workforce. This will ensure that inflation figures are moderate for the rest of the year. Another sign of softening inflation is the decreasing pricing power of firms. Firm profits grew strongly in 2021 evidence of microeconomic inflation as firms can openly pass on price pressures to consumers. But this is less likely to continue. Consider that firms often face a trade-off between raising prices and losing market share. This trade-off was suspended when the economy reopened due to high demand and low supply. But pricing power is likely to decline as demand slows and inventories rebuild. Large retailers such as Walmart and Target have exhibited such dynamics recently when they have shown shrinking margins. However, reducing inflation is not the same as beating inflation. Realistically, while inflation will decline, it will remain above the 2% target rate over the next year and reasonably beyond, and upside risks remain. There may be new, unexpected shocks. Monetary policy gets tough. While most of the Fed's rate hikes are due this year, their lagged effects will shift recession risks further into 2023. In the current trajectory, the policy rate will reach a tight level of around 3% and headwinds to the economy will continue. Dot. However, this may not be the end of monetary tightening. For monetary policy to declare victory, price growth needs to return to its pre-pandemic levels, and policy target, of around 2%. Rates may need to climb further as drivers of inflation turn from idiosyncratic squeezes like auto supply chains to more sticky areas like services more broadly. The wind against the economy is already felt. The prospect of tighter policy has pushed up long-term interest rates, which has battered equity markets, and therefore household wealth and confidence, and slowed spending growth. Sharply high mortgage rates are affecting the housing market. All this headwind is being revived by policymakers without surgical precision. In fact, central bankers are almost flying blind, most watching the economy only through a hazy rear-view mirror as macro data is delayed. It is unclear how much its decisions will tighten financial conditions or how much this will affect the economy, and all of that could change suddenly. Therefore, given the high price increase, while rate hikes are a necessity, it is almost unknown how much and when. How soft or hard can the landing be? 
We should also ask how much stress the economy can handle, as the chance of a recession comes to the balance between moderate inflation and a slowing economy. If a 2023 recession is avoided, it will be because US consumers and firms are still healthy. Household balance sheets are strong, and the labor market is booming. Encouragingly, we are seeing some cooling of inflation pressures, such as the fall in durable goods prices and easing wage growth, without macroeconomic weakness. And while firms' margins will fall from here, they're falling from extremely strong levels. Still, it's easy to point to the vulnerabilities of the economy. The deteriorating business mood may quickly lose the momentum of the economy by focusing on investment. Despite the strong labor market and strong household balance sheets, consumer confidence has been under pressure for some time, possibly driven by energy prices. Add to that the fact that shaky financial markets are shrinking household wealth, a problem that will only get worse if the housing market turns, and the cycle seems vulnerable. However, if a recession occurs in 2023, there are good reasons to expect that the drivers of the most damaging types of recession will moderate as they are less likely today. Banks are well capitalized, profitable, and unlikely to make a structural bulge in a recession. This rule out the possibility that demand could bounce back quickly and labor markets will remain tight, keeping the recession moderate. Real, stagflation, fears early. One benefit of the recession would be the possibility of extinguishing the fire of inflation. But what if a recession fails to return price growth to its pre-pandemic slumber? Even if current levels are not reasonable, a recession in 2023 or 2024 could easily coexist with inflation above target, 2%. This kind of inflation could sustain drivers like wages and housing, unlike the idiosyncratic squeezes we've seen so far. While a reasonable risk, such an outcome would still not have been the true stagflation of the 1970s. Although popular in the headlines today, stagflation is more than a combination of very slow growth and very high inflation. It was a structurally broken economy at the time, where price growth never calmed down, as confidence in price stability, expectations, was deeply damaged. This resulted in high long-term interest rates, undermined monetary and fiscal policy, and consistently high unemployment rates, a set of outcomes far worse than expectations of high inflation and slow growth. Such a nightmare scenario cannot be ignored today, but it should not be the base case. It is the Fed that stands between a recession and stagflation with inflation above the target. If the central bank is determined to keep its monetary policy tight despite the recession, there is every chance for inflation to work through the system. This requires considerable strength and independence as politicians, investors, and the public push for rate cuts. Still, we think the Fed will stay afloat when faced with the possibility of a structural break. What managers should do. Managers who digest risks need to focus on four priorities. First, consider pricing strategically. While inflation is set to moderate, it will do so slowly. Even in a recession, the risk will remain on the upside. While the strength to beat price increases will be softened by the COVID recovery, continued price dispersion and volatility will provide selective opportunities for some games in some markets. Second, avoid dualistic framing of recession and avoid mental models that link risk to recent experiences. Not all recessions are deep structural scars like 2008, and not all of them have as severe an impact as the COVID recession. Understanding the drivers and nature of the future recession will prepare firms for better navigation. Don't underestimate the idea that the next recession may be mild and short. Third, remember that every dislocation and stress is also an opportunity for superior performance. Those with a playbook that focuses on flexibility and controlled risk-taking have a chance of relative, even absolute, superior performance if they can create and seize strategic opportunities in bad times. Fourth, don't combine a funding squeeze and a market correction with the decline of technology's strategic importance as tech stocks drop sharply. The application of digital technology will continue to distort competition and grow in all industries. In short, while we are clear about the drivers and risks, uncertainty and change will require companies to regularly update their views on the economy, prepare for multiple plausible scenarios, and avoid assuming the worst outcomes.